episode number six of my podcast, uh, Work in Progress. Um, and just before we get started, you know, I'm a realtor here in Los Angeles with Team BC with Brian Casella. If you or anyone you know has any real estate needs, I'm your boy. Hit me up, okay? So now today uh, I have a very special guest, um, part of Modern Success, and someone who I was able to actually meet face to face uh, a few weeks ago in Miami, Mr. Zach Allen, realtor and team leader of the Dream Team. That's a badass name, by the way. The Dream Team. Yeah, was- <laughs> Like, I, when I think of Dream Team, I think of, like, Michael Jordan. Right. Back in the day, the Olympics. <laughs> so, uh, Zach, he's uh, from Spokane, Washington. And so he's going to tell us a little bit more about how he's doing. Uh, actually, he hasn't been in the business for too long. and He's killing it. Uh, you know, I actually look up to you, bro. Just uh, Thanks, wanna see, I want to see how you're doing. And, yeah, so just go ahead and tell us a little bit uh, more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so uh, became a realtor. I think January would be my two years uh, before. It took me about three or four months before I started selling because I had like a hold up at the DOL or mm-hmm. licensing or something. Okay. So I'd say it'd probably be two years come March of like actively trying to slay real estate. But mm-hmm. um, uh, started in January. Yeah, it was it was tough, man. I failed my test a few times because I'm not very good at studying. So that was that was hard, man. <laughs> it was hard, it was hard to get hard to get in. Um, but it's it's been a a joy ride ever since. Joy ride ever since. Uh, my first year, I did I think about twenty, like my first like calendar year, right? Like mm-hmm. 2019. I think I did about 15 to 20 deals. Wow. In my first 12 months, I think I did about 40 to 50, and then from January to December of 2020, I think I'm headed to about 90 to 100 transactions. So let me let me stop you right there, uh, Zach. So you said the first calendar year you did about 20 deals, right? Like my first, like since I think it took me about three or four months to get my first deal, mm-hmm. and then from like that point to December of 2019, I did like 15 to 20. No, right, no. and that, that's a great number. So, you know, I, I wish I did that, that many deals. Um, yeah. So, uh, if anyone is watching this and they're in real estate, um, you know, usually they say that the first year is where you struggle the most. I mean, I, I'm doing okay myself, but I'm not doing uh, as the volume of transactions that you're doing. So maybe you can yeah. tell us a little bit more about what are you doing and how do you get there? Yeah. Well, so I. When, I remember when we saw each other face to face, right? We talked about kind of the the period of darkness, as I was calling it, right? Where <laughs> some 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 realtors, when they first start, you go through that dry spell, right? Like some some realtors, right? You start off and you get lucky, right? Or whatever you want to call it, could be luck, some of its skill, happen chance, blessings, right? Whatever whatever you want to stick on it, and you'll get like a few family or a few friends or mm-hmm. someone or a homie who's willing to give you a chance, which is what I had, right? I had a, I had a friend I, I knew in like sixth grade, wow. right? Or fourth grade. And I had known her my whole life and her and her husband want to buy a home from grandpa. So I, I, I started helping them and just gave them a killer deal, did the whole thing. I, and they, I don't think they could have done it without me, man. There was some complications like replacing the roof and a bunch of stuff that we had to do to make the loan work. And the, the lender was terrible. So there was a lot that, you know, I was able to help. And then it's like you use your social media, right? You mm-hmm. probably experienced this where you start and they're like, okay, Zach, Zach got a, got a deal. He's, he's doing it, right? And then you do a few deals and people are like, oh, shit, Zach's a realtor. And then you do like 10 of them and they're uh-huh. like, man, this guy is killing it, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like a, it's definitely a compound effect in your circle. And then from there I had a bunch of homies start hitting me up. And then they I think people just kind of respected how hard I was going at it because um, everything in my life, I go hard. And then I met Mike, right. Who Mm -hmm. does my Facebook, who um, my ROI on my, on my Facebook ads through Mike is probably about 15 to 20 to one, depending on the month. Well, Mike, Mike, by the way, if you're watching this or listening to this, uh, we need to talk, man. I know I've been ghosting you for a couple of days, but I've been busy. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we're talking in the next few days, bro. Uh, All right, man. Yeah. I appreciate that, Zach. So, yeah, so you, you know, a lot of people want to go to 
through the dry spell. You know, as the one started, I didn't get a single deal for three months, and after that, it's actually a referral for my dad. Uh, yep. I was a buyer, and after I got that one deal, things started catching up. Right, like uh, actually, my second deal was a listing in which I got four deals out of that. So, and you now after that, you know, I got a few buyers here and there. So, for example, for me, it's uh, as of right now, it's 50 50 between buyers and sellers. Um, and you know, the I know you, 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 your business, you work a little bit different. Um, and you know, also because I don't know a lot of people, you know, I wasn't born and raised in LA. So where, I don't were know, you, where are you from? Uh, South America, Peru. Oh, okay. So I moved here about 12 years ago. So I don't really know a lot of people. So I just got a, I guess, a call call, door knock, whatever I have to do. So I don't have a, a sphere of influence, which I know some people. I went to college here, but, you know, a lot of people are not in the best position right now to buy a home. I understand that. Yeah, but it's sure. going to come. It's going to come later. Uh, I just want to make sure, you know, I put my, my name out there so they know. I'm sure everyone who follows me there really know I'm in real estate. And so when the time comes, no, I hope I can help them. Yeah. So, yeah, Zach, so, you know, you told us a little bit more about what you do, how you got there. So tell me more about how and why do you start real estate and what were you doing before? Okay, so when, when I first got... I guess the idea I was selling cars, um, but before that I was in college. I was getting my uh, I was I was going for I was going for my doctorate or master's in psychology. That was my goal. Okay, um, I was pretty close to getting my AA, and then I met my wife. So my wife Libby is is thirty going on thirty one, and I'm twenty seven. She was a little bit older than me, and at the time. I think when I met her, I was like 22, 23. So she was like 26, 27. So that dynamic is huge, right? So that dynamic between age groups is huge. So I was like, shit, I have to rush my life if I want to be with this lady, mm -hmm. right? Which I did because she wanted to have kids, family. So I ended up dropping out of school, dropping out of school. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I need to make money, right? Like I got to be a man. My life shifted from just like playing basketball and working out at the Y to like, oh man, I got to like, get some money, I gotta I gotta set a foundation for my family, I gotta get some kind of stable income and all that. Um so then I went to the car lot. I've had sales experience before, but then it was crazy. I I, I got around some people, they refined me, I started really listening to like mentorship uh like Brian Casella mm -hmm. and him plugged in just in my ear always. I and I had like two mentors I just listened to all the time and I, they, I would just ask them questions and I'd go do it. I wouldn't like question it. I would just go do it. So whatever they told me, I'd go do it. And then I started getting my own sauce in the car world and learning my own tricks along, you know, off the bones of what they taught me. So I got in, I trained for two months and then in four months I sold 65 cars. 65. I was slinging 65 wow. cars and I was like, holy, holy shit. I can, I can move units and a lot of people, trusted me and that's what i have heard a lot of people say all the time is they're like, Zach, you're a really good guy you care um you're really authentic i you're just different from other car car people so i i learned i had their work ethic and then i saw through my experience and how i treated people people saw i wasn't just you know your average salesman mm -hmm. so I, I had a lot of people tell me hey if you can get into real estate your your cap is unlimited you can make as much money and have all your time and do all this and have no boss, right? And people trust you and people trust you way more, right, when you are a realtor than a car salesman. Everyone hates car salesmen. So they hate you as soon as you get there. Realtors, people are like, oh, yeah, they're a realtor. Um, they're, you know, uh, you know, really nice, uh, you know, really nice guy or gal. You know, and then it's either they answer their phone and they're lazy and they don't know what they're doing or they're a rock star, right? There's like no in between. That's You're right. not like an average realtor. So, so I just got in, applied my work ethic and applied my people skills of just who I am naturally and how I was raised to be a good person. And I found instant success because if you can sell a car, dude, there's not much you can't do. I'm going gonna, gonna to gonna cut you right there, bro. Actually, when I, I did a few sales jobs, including cell phones, but uh, that was one of the jobs I got. Selling cars, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. I lasted two days. 
I went for the training on the next day and I couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I didn't see I didn't see myself doing it. It was crazy. But when, then you know, fast forward once I started real estate, um, I still didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was watching Brian and other people, and so I had an idea what I had to do. You know, I, I did door knock before. Uh, I did some cold calls at previous jobs. Um, not as much as I'm doing right now, but you know, I had the foundation. And I wasn't scared because when I, in my previous sales jobs, when I started door knocking and cold calling and I saw the money coming in, I, I, I was like, what did I go to college for? Shoot, I want my money back. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, it was a great experience, but long story short, I, I didn't last in, in car sales, only two days, man. I, I couldn't, they kept calling me, but I couldn't go back. It's just. It's a, it's a brutal business. It's brutal. I, I want to say that it's, it's harder no harder or it takes a different type of skills than even real estate that it's it's probably if you do great in car like what you did i mean you can't do anything at this point right yeah i always say that uh car sales is like the stanford university of the sales world or harvard if you, you know you go there you get your school hard knocks you get the best sales education possible because a lot of real estate and what I think is kind of how you say it, when you say it, mm -hmm. and then more of who you are, right? Your your, your, your sales skills in real estate um, will get you far, but I think who you are as a person and how you carry yourself gets you further, right? And then obviously your knowledge of situations, the market, all that. So I think that takes you way further than your sales skills. But having that like Brian Casella, Supreme Being sales just – Mamba mentality, right? I have it right behind me. I'm sign there. Mamba mentality, <laughs> right? So if you if you have that, it makes real estate that much easier for you, right? Because it's more about who who you are as a person and those relationships. But you got those sales skills. It's just it, it, you can do anything, you know. Yeah, you're totally right. And even um, no, I was watching a video of uh, Brian's interview. I forgot his name, but it was a guy that. Um, he would door knock, okay? He would door knock, that's all he would do, and he would make a lot of money. And he said that he, Brian went with him, door knocking, and he didn't have a lot of skills, no, but he just, the, the way he was, people really liked him. And just because of that, he would get a lot of business. So yeah, it, it was very interesting, because you know, I know, I see the way you are, and, and you know, it's, it's I admire it, you know, I, my background is different. I was, I grew up a lot different, but I'm trying to, I guess, be more empathetic, if you call it. We had this conversation. Uh, know that I'm not, but I don't like small talk. And so sometimes when I come across people that are direct, I really like that, as long as there's no jerks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting because, you know, you get all the different personalities. And at this point right now, I talk to anyone. But, uh, you know, you, you clash with people. So, you know, with that being said, how, how do you go about uh, talking to people, let's say, they're rude to you? or? Um, yeah, I think what a lot of people say about me is that I'm very straightforward, but I care. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that a lot about, about me. And I really do try to put people, you know, in that first, right? You know, I really try to, try to keep, treat people the right way, and I, and I really – I have a hard time if I don't, right? It eats away at me. My, I just know it subconsciously. It's 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 difficult. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to work with someone that you're just the opposite of, right? So um, I don't really know how how to explain it to you about how I do it. I think you know what? I, I just try to find common ground. We're completely different, or mm -hmm. you voted Trump, or I voted Biden, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you like basketball, and I like basketball. So maybe when we're together, I know we can just talk basketball, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, you just uh, keep it strictly professional. How are you doing today? Oh, that's great, you know? Or maybe they're negative, and you don't like that they're negative, but you just, you know, always are saying, oh, I'm sorry, that's tough, right? And then I, I know mentally I just have to shield myself to not get wrapped up in all the negative, right? Because if I have negative friends, I'm just like, bye. Right. If there's drama in my personal life, I'm like, bye. But I know sometimes your business and your personal life are two different entities. Right. So I put on a different 
cake, right? Because as a salesman, that's when the salesman comes out you, mm -hmm. and you learn how to be a chameleon, right, and just adapt. Yep. Mm -hmm. Adapt to the the other person, not necessarily you lose yourself, but sometimes you got to forgive some of your personality traits to go, all right, man, if I say this around this guy, he's going to shoot me. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? Or like, you know, if I say this around this guy, he's going to fucking clock me in the throat, right? <laughs> so you got to, sometimes you just got to be, you got to be careful. Uh, but, the, you know, then there's the clients that, you know, you can cuss in front of them or you talk about, your favorite metal band or right and they click with you and it just makes it easy but yeah being a chameleon i think is very important yeah man and uh, that's actually i learned that doing this job right here doing real estate i know i grew up being i guess i wouldn't want to say an introvert maybe but just being more on the, on the quiet side i wasn't super loud uh so now on the phones i learned to do that because a lot of people you know like if you call expires they're upset they yell at you for whatever reason and I just learned to match that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but no, I don't care, you know? It just, I learned to, like you said, be a chameleon and talk to different people. For some reason, you know, the old people like me. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they just, we can relate. Um, but yeah, I'm an old soul. <laughs> I'm an old soul. <laughs> That's it. All right, hey, Zach, so, I know you, you have the team, right? Uh, so tell us more about your team. How do you start it and why do you start it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, going back to my first year, right? First, so we go first 12 months in the business. It was about 40, 50 deals. First calendar year was about, you know, 15, but maybe let's call it 15, 20, 15 to 25. So what happened uh, when I was at my last brokerage is I was the fastest to cap 100% commission. And I was, I think, I competed with because the the owner there she does like thirty five thirty six mil a year in wow in revenue like she's a baller she's super nice learned a lot from her she's a really good person um I I even I beat her in in, in volume a few months right so it was like whoa you know and then I kind of started realizing like hey I think this thing is starting to take some legs I never <laughs> expected for years right or maybe even ever happen. Right, mm -hmm. so I always got in. I was like, oh, I'll make sixty grand a year, hundred grand a year, you have a good life. Always, obviously, keeping more capacity to do more. That's always the goal, right? Of course, always, mm -hmm. always try to you know get abundance. But you know, I had that that goal that I, I at least need to do this to you know have a wife, have kids, mm -hmm. have a house, blah blah blah. So I capped fast, faster than anyone else, and then I won rookie of the year. And then I was like, you know, I look, I was looking around. And I'm like, you know, not a lot of guys do this in their first year. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I at least know I don't want to come back and pay another, uh, you know, twenty thousand dollar cap. I knew that for a fact. Mm -hmm. You know, because because of what I did usually takes people, I think, two to six years, let's say, right? In my first twelve first twelve months. So. Then I went to a brokerage, a professional who's been great to me, and they're 100% commission all the time. Mm -hmm. They take desk, like a transaction fee, and that's it. That's all I got. Okay. So then I knew I had the framework to start a team because instead of paying a cap, I could support young starting up realtors, and that was kind of wanted to be my passion, right, because I like to help other people, right? That's why you're in business in the first place, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and so – and so um, – yeah, and then we started, and I got a few guys, and then I got a few guys. Uh, I got my first realtor that was already in business, and I attracted him through kind of my ads. And then I got a few young guys that wanted to, a few of them, you know, kind of burn off, did their own thing. Mm -hmm. They're young, right? Um, then I got a few guys from the uh, car world who had a lot of success who saw me and were like, you know, I dropped the sauce and how – you know, if you can do cars, you can do this, you'll probably actually make three to four times more easily because of the sales skills you have, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'd only take them because they were good people, right? Because car people, you know, you don't want the slime bags. And there's a lot of slime bags. Yeah. So they're good people. Plus they have that, you know, BC mentality, sales ability. So I started getting a few pieces and now we've probably been in about five months. And now by December, we'll probably have about 13 people and I'll be probably by January through March, let's call it, I will be a licensed agent probably in December in Idaho. 
and I'll probably have a few agents in Idaho. So not only will within a year we'll, we'll have like you know thirteen guys, but we'll also be in two states, I'm which glad, is awesome. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because actually I came across a, a seller here that may be moving there. So expect a referral from you. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's great, man. That's always crazy how much you've grown in, let's say, a little less than two years, right? Yeah. Uh, that's just amazing. So where, where where, do you see yourself and your team in the next five, ten years? Oh, man. Well, uh, I guess you never know. Maybe Team BC, if it makes sense. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um <laughs> I think uh, I think I know for sure I want to be an Idahoan here. Um, you say you want to be in Idaho? Yep, Idaho, which is coming up, right? Okay. So going to Idaho in here, and then there's a place as you go, you know where Seattle is? Yeah. Because we're like east, right? So as you go west, you mm -hmm. go towards Seattle. I'd like to kind of go west and maybe get into this place called Tri-Cities, okay. um, uh, more of a farm farm townish vibe kind of in the middle of the desert mm -hmm. um and then then down to seattle would be like the end goal i'd like to i'd like to get down to seattle and then honestly i know it sounds cheesy because we were just down there i would love to go buy some real estate in florida and i'm think i'm, I'm literally low-key thinking about moving to florida i like i like the vibe I like how multicultural it is. I love the culture. I think uh, a lot of my values are down there. Mm -hmm. um, from honestly, the Spanish culture. I think I respect them. They value family. Um, they love. They love to have fun. They're very like you said, like where you came from, straightforward, which I love. <laughs> so I love that attitude. So I, I, I really felt that in the culture down there, and um, I really think I could. You know, if I can build this the right way, I can at least see myself down there in the winters. At least, you know what I'm saying? Escape the snow here and go down there. I really, I really just, I really vibe with the culture down there. Yeah, you, you know, the only one, you know, like, this is my second time in Miami and me too. You know, I'm thinking the next few years, possibly moving that way. And, and <laughs> I spoke with a lot of people from uh, Modern Success and so there's going to be a few of us there in the next five years. That's all I can nice. say. <laughs> all right, Zach. So um, well, we've probably been talking for, for like 20, 25 minutes. So um, if you guys, anyone anyone watching this, uh, the recording or the video, uh, have any real estate needs in either Spokane, soon Idaho, right? Or yeah, Coeur d'Alene, Post Falls. Yep. There you go. Or LA for me, let us know. You know we'll take care of you. Um, if, do you have any last words, Zach? No, man. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, like, like he was saying, check, check, check me out if you're coming up this way. Any referrals, uh, whatever you need, you know, I'll take care of you, family. Uh, or if you're in the area listening to this and want to get into real estate, you know, I'd uh, love to sit down and get a coffee. Of course. Yeah. See if uh, you could make it in, on the team and fit in the culture. Got it, brother. So it was a, hey, it was great. It's been great talking to you again. 